Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. With this problem, we are going to cover a very important topic and we'll discuss multiple approaches to solve this. We are given a grid with M rows and N columns and there is a robot at the top left corner whose goal is to reach the bottom right corner. It is given that the robot can only move in the right or the downward direction and we have to count the number of possible unique paths that the robot can take. For example, this will be one unique path, this will be a different unique path and similarly this is also an unique path. We have to count the total number of such paths that exist. Let's try to solve this problem for a much simpler use case. Let's assume that the grid has only one cell. In this case, the robot will already be at the desired destination. The only way for this to be possible is that the robot does not move either in the right or the downward direction. So there is only one possible way. Let's consider a grid with one column and two cells. So the robot will originally be above the destination. There is only one possible way in which it can reach the finished position is by moving one step downwards. Similarly, if we consider this grid, there is only one possible path by moving two steps downwards. In fact, if we had more cells in this column, there will still be only one way to reach the finished position. Similarly, if we consider a row wise grid, from all these cells, there is only one way to reach the destination is by moving right. So for all the cells in the last column and the last row, there is only one way to reach the destination. If we consider this grid, one way to reach the destination would be to go right and then go down. Similarly, we can go down and then right to reach the destination. So there are two possible ways to go to the destination from this point. From this grid, the robot can go right and from there, there is only one possible way to go to the destination. We can also go two steps down and then take a right to reach the destination. There is also another way by first going down and then right and then again down. So there are three possible ways to reach the destination from this point. So when we went right, there was only one way to reach the destination. And when we went one step down, there were two ways to reach the destination. Well, if you observe, this could have been derived from the pre-computed result for the right and the below cell. We could have summed these two and found the result. Similarly, for this position, we could sum the results for the right and the below cell. Similarly, we can compute the result for all the cells. And to calculate the total number of paths, we could add the results for the first cell towards right and the first cell towards down. In this approach, we are starting from the smallest subproblem that is possible, which is the case when the robot is already at the destination. And gradually, we are using this result to find the solution for larger subproblems. And finally, we'll compute the result for the initial position of the robot. So, this approach is called as the bottom up approach. So, this is how our complete solution grid will look like. But when we are calculating the result for this cell, we only require the results for these two cells. Similarly, for calculating the result for this cell, we'll require the results for these two cells. So for calculating the results in this row, we do not need any results from two rows below it. So rather than storing the whole grid in memory, we can just store the results for two rows at a time. This kind of space optimization is pretty common when using the bottom-up approach and we'll be looking at it more often in the future problems that we solve. Now let's try to solve this problem from the initial starting position of the robot. Initially, the robot can move in two directions, right and down. As we have already seen previously, the final result will be the sum of the results for the adjacent right and down cells. And the results for these two cells will depend upon these cells. If you notice, the result for both the green and the red cell depends upon the result for the yellow cell. So we don't want to recompute it every time. Hence it makes sense to cache the results. The result for the bottom right cell will be 1 as we have already seen before. This will be your base condition. In fact, the result for all the cells in the last row and the last column will be 1. We can also use this as a base condition. So in this approach, we are starting to solve the largest subproblem. And gradually, we are solving the smaller subproblems recursively. And this recursion will finish when it reaches the base condition. So that's why this approach is also known as the top-down approach. 
This is very similar in logic to the bottom up approach. Now let's look at the final approach to solve this problem. This requires a bit of maths because you need to know permutations and combinations to come up with this solution. These are the coordinates of the initial and the final positions of the robot. Let's consider any valid path in the grid. To reach the destination, we had to take 6 right steps and 2 downward steps. You can see that this is going to be the same for any valid path. So we had to move 8 moves in total. So out of these 8 moves, we had to choose 6 right moves. The total number of count for this will be 8C6. Similarly, this can also be seen as choosing 2 downward moves from our 8 moves. Hence, the count of this will be the same as 8C2. In general, we can apply this formula to get our answer. The time complexity of our math solution will be O of m plus n. This is because we will have to calculate m plus n factorial. And the time complexity would be O of m into n for both our top down and bottom up approaches. This is because we have to compute the result for each cell in the grid. The space complexity for a math solution would be constant. For our top down memoization solution, we have to cache the result for each cell. Hence the space complexity would be O of m into n. In our bottom up approach, we don't need to store the result for the whole grid. So the space complexity would be O of the minimum of the row or the column. Let's implement all the three solutions. For a math solution, we can directly use this formula to count the number of combinations for choosing m minus 1 down moves from m plus n minus 2 total moves. Now let's implement our top down recursive solution. Our recursive function will take the row and the column value as an input parameter. We'll write our base condition that if we have reached the last row or the last column, in that case, we'll return 1. For each cell, the robot can move in the down direction or the right direction. So we'll call this recursive function for both these directions and the result will be the sum of these two. Let's not forget to cache our results. We could have also done this manually using a hash map. And finally, we'll call this recursive function on the 0th row and the 0th column and we'll return this result directly. Now we are done with our top down solution. Let's implement the bottom up solution. In this approach, we only need to store the results for two rows. So let's define the result for our lower row. We'll initialize it to 1 because we know that the result for all the cells in the last row is 1. Now we'll start computing the result from our second last row till the 0th row. We'll store the result for this row in our upper DP. We'll initialize all the cells to be 0. We know that the result for the last column in the grid is always 1. So we'll initialize the result for the last cell in our upper row to be always 1. Now we'll compute the result from the second last column to the 0th column. The result for each cell will be the sum of the result of the right and the below cell. The right value is stored in the upper list at the j plus 1 index and the below value will be stored in the lower list in the jth index. And once we are done computing the results for all the cells in the upper row, we can use the computed result as the lower row for the next upper row. So we'll assign this result to a lower row. And finally, the result for the 0th row and the 0th column will be found at the 0th index of the lower row. This will also handle the case when there is only one row in the grid. Please note that we cannot use the upper row over here because it is defined inside the loop. Our solution is complete. Let's submit it. As you can see, our solution is accepted. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.